If you say the word Palau, it truly sends tingles up and down my spine. This place is really heaven on earth. Hundreds of tropical limestone islands scattered along the equator, surrounded by a barrier reef. Beautiful white sandy beaches, vertical drop-offs and forested inland lakes. This is truly a world-class environment. But the best thing, this place has also been recently declared a shark sanctuary and its marine life is second to none. So this opens the door for an incredible sustainable tourism industry. My name's Lynn Sutherland. I'm an adventurer and environmentalist. I partnered with EarthCheck in my quest to uncover the world's best practice in sustainable tourism. My journey took me to exotic locations where people are coming together in a bid to preserve the planet. We need to know the impact tourism has on these incredible destinations and the role each of us must play as responsible travellers. The Republic of Palau consists of a string of islands along an oceanic ridge in the westernmost part of the North Pacific. 800 kilometres east of the Philippines, 660 kilometres north of Erie and Jaya, and 2,000 kilometres north of Australia. Palau is part of a scattering of islands that became known collectively as the Caroline Islands. These islands lie within the larger region of Micronesia and it's not hard to see the attraction of this place. Palau is such an untouched paradise, above and below the waterline. Over 15 years ago, when I first came to Palau, I dived on this little blue boat with a guy called Sam. Now, I was told back then, he knew Palau better than anyone else. But today, Sam's tours has grown just a little bit, Take a look at this. He has boats absolutely everywhere. Hi, Sam. Morning, Lynn. Well, you've grown. Got a few uh, boats now. Yeah, just a few. <laughs> How many have you got? Uh, at least 12. This is Sam. Good morning. <laughs> Sam's Tours is the first company in Palau to sign up to the EarthCheck program, joining a growing family that includes many of the world's sustainable tourism leaders. As the company's largest carbon footprint is created by the use of its boats, it's here where the biggest changes can be made. The EarthCheck program will help SAMs to measure and manage their environmental impact and teach them how to reduce this in simple yet effective ways, while letting us enjoy this incredible location. My passion for Palau just happened in instantaneously. You know, as soon as I jumped into the water and, or as soon as I landed on the island, but more so when I jumped into the water and saw the marine environment here, that just, that took me. What about the diversity of the diving? You know, the reef here, it probably extends from, if you were to count like from Peleliu all the way up to Kaengo, that's probably 70, 80 miles of, of reef line you know, that encompass, that's encompassed by a barrier reef. If you came and you had a week, what could you cover? Um, well, definitely you'd want to come to this area over here and, and do Shai's Tunnel, Oolong Channel, uh, possibly Shark City. Um, you would definitely want to do Blue Corner, Blue Holes. There's even another blue hole there we call the Virgin Blue Hole, which is pretty exciting and unique. And then coming around the corner from that, we have Nimalee's drop-off, or the big, the big drop-off. The big drop. Yeah, the big <laughs> drop. <laughs> yeah, straight drop straight down. For, uh, I, I'm guessing 1,000 plus feet. With so many amazing dive sites to choose from, we thought we'd try and get some big marine life action at German Channel. German Channel is a passage close to the outer walls. And as soon as I went below the glistening blue water, I found a huge school of bigger trevally. Large schools of fish is a sign of a healthy marine ecosystem. So many places these days have been overfished, 
and marine life is suffering under the pressures of mismanaged fisheries around the world. Being surrounded by large schools of tuna and sharks and big fish like Maori race is a very positive experience. But the main reason I was diving here at German Channel is to find one of my favourite marine animals, the manta ray. Mantas can be a little elusive, but me and mantas have a special connection. And sure enough, along came a manta. I had to gain the mantas' trust, and I do this by talking to them and letting them know how wonderful I think they are. Then, I get to get really close, seeing the mantle's eyes and even under the belly. Marine encounters are my greatest passion. It allows you a glimpse into another world. I thank the manta for letting me share a moment in time. As I swam back to the boat, I came across a turtle happily munching away, with a circus of fish taking advantage of the mess that he made. What a wonderful world we have beneath our sea. It was time for us to explore the rock islands, which boast so many picturesque environments tucked into nooks and crannies some found nowhere else in the entire world. This is the stunning Milky Way. It's this perfect turquoise colour. But you get the colour because when it rains, the water runs off the limestone islands and it settles on the bottom. So you just get this beautiful little tranquil bay full of limestone. Malahi's just gone down to get some mud because apparently it makes you younger. So I'm going to put it all over my face and all over my body and maybe when I finish, I'll be a teenager again. <laughs> That's better. I feel so much younger. <laughs> Our next little adventure is to one of my favourite places in the whole of Palau. Now, it's been a few years since I've been here, and now you have to have a permit. But this is the awesome Jellyfish Lake. Apparently, the jellyfish are that way, so we're going to put our mask, snorkel and fins on and head for the jellyfish. All right, Daniel. Ready? You ready? Ready. Uh, okay. Most jellyfish sting you, but this is a species that's adapted to live in a landlocked lake, is yeah, that correct? Yeah, definitely. In the outside world, when, you, when we saw a jellyfish, definitely we're going to swim away from it. But on this particular one, what we're going to do is we're going to swim where the thick part is. This is the best thing about jellyfish lake. We want to get amongst the jellyfish. We're not scared of them. We want them all around us. But the thing is, be careful, because you can hurt jellyfish by doing your fins. So we've got to swim carefully yep. and don't scoop too much. That is great news. These are friendly jellyfish that don't sting. Jellyfish normally follows the sun when the sun rises up at the east side, so most of the jellyfish are on that side of the lake. And as the sun uh, goes by all the way up in the afternoon, the jellyfish follows it. It's the main uh, product of uh, their source food. Of, uh, it's the byproduct of photosynthesis. I make food from their sunlight. Mm. If it's sunny like this, they're not hanging out too much at the surface because they can get uh, a sunburn too. So they go a little bit deeper, maybe like two meters. So we might have to snorkel down a little yeah. bit. For uh, 13 to 14 meters, it's highly uh, concentrated bacteria. 15 meters below, it's highly toxic hydrogen sulfide. So uh, no free diving. 
Don't go too deep. <laughs> Don't go too deep. If you drop something, just say bye bye, because uh, it might kill you. Yeah, right. It's a poison for our system. And is this the only jellyfish lake in Palau? We have six jellyfish lake in Palau, but this is the only one that's open for public. So we preserve the rest. It was very special. Thank you very much. You're I'll never my forget pleasure. my little jellyfish. They were absolutely everywhere. This is why I love Palau so much. I mean, just take a look at it. Look at the colour of the water with the turquoises and the blues. And then you get these gorgeous little limestone islands like this one behind me that just sit there by themselves. But there are literally hundreds of these scattered all along this place, as far as the eye can see. Our next adventure will show us even remote locations like this one did not escape the tragedy of World War II. I am on the beautiful island of Peleliu, which is situated right in the southern end of Palau. Now, Peleliu offers sensational diving with wall drop-offs, but it also has a darker side, and that is the history of World War II on this island. In fact, this very beach is the first point of landing by US troops during World War II, and the island of Peleliu and Angao, just behind me right in the southern end, is where some of the bloodiest battles of World War II actually took place. So what happened and how did it start? Well, originally uh, the invasion had took place at September 15th of 1944 by the 1st Marine Division. The 1st Marine Division had encountered heavy resistance from the Japanese here on this particular part of the island due to the fact that it's the shortest distance between the water and the, and the airfield. So what can we see as we walk around this island? What kind of things can we see? Well, we have uh, remnants of the battle throughout the island. Uh, granted, the battle was about 65 years ago, but uh, we still do have uh, old Japanese buildings, Japanese tanks, American tanks, as well as many, many caves that the Japanese had dug out here on Peleliu. This is really cool because if you come behind, you can actually see the cave where the gun's located. Don't forget, all of Palau is surrounded with caves like this. Beneath the water, the tragedy of World War II gives birth to new life. and allows divers to take a look at past history in living colour. There are many wrecks here, both ships and planes, and each one of them has their own story to tell. Our culture is still very strong and they have wonderful legends and stories but they also have an amazing ceremony called the first child ceremony. Now, both the mother and father's parents have all been in there and the whole family. They've been doing the negotiation side of the ceremony but right now we're going to meet the mother to me and she's been all decked out and she's in a beautiful traditional dress and here she comes. Both the men and women are well respected. 
Now, the women choose the chiefs of the village, but once the chiefs are chosen, they come to what they call the men's house. So, Malahi, what's the significance of the men's house? OK, the men's house is actually, it's a chief's house, a chief for this village. And this is where they always make a decision about the village, about fishing, about going to a war. And but is it only the chiefs that get to go inside yeah, this house? Only the particular chiefs are allowed in there and women are not allowed in there, yeah. The only women that not, are allowed inside the men's house, we call them a by girl, a by girl. So, so from another village, maybe three, four, five women can come inside the by, entertain the men, cook for them. And then in return, they bring the Palawan money, like this, and they bring the Palawan money to their village. What about all the drawings on this men's house? Do they all have a significance? Yep, yeah, all the paintings on the men's house have a meaning. That's how they tell the stories or a symbol of something that they use. So are we allowed to go into these men's houses? Oh, well, we can go inside when there's nobody here, no chiefs in here having a meeting. When the chiefs comes in, they don't just sit anywhere. A particular chief from a particular clan has a place to sit in a by. These uh, faces is like a spirit of their ancestors. And this, you know, where they chew betel nut, they spit through this hole. So they've actually got betel nut holes? Yes. And if they're sleeping at night and cannot be bothered to go outside, they roll on their tummy, be through these holes. Right. Yeah, so when you see these holes, it means men's house only. <laughs> We've made it to the Earth Mile waterfall and it's about a 20 minute hike. It's supposed to be a little bit difficult, so we've got to grab a couple of walking sticks. Just from here? Yes, right here. So this is the tallest waterfall in Palau. Now there are some amazing things you can do here in Palau, but today I am in for one of the biggest adventures. I'm at the southern end of the Milky Way and today I'll be kayaking the Tunnel of Doom. Now my guide Ron is one of the most knowledgeable people about the natural assets of Palau and he assures me that this environment here is one of the most unique and pristine environments in the whole of Palau. Put over 300 rock islands in uh in Palau, this site is absolutely unique. You have an unusual combination of physical events, the high protective walls, the overhanging branches creating shade, and then as you'll see, a huge current flow from the tunnels of doom. And as a result, we get these magnificent multicolored brain corals. You have to go through the tunnels into this completely protected environment. It's actually an enclosed saltwater lake. After 15 years of exploring this area, I've never found anything else like it. Tell me what we might expect when we go in there. Well, we have to show some degree of caution and respect. There's only a handful of days per month and only a handful of months per year when the tides are just right to shoot these tunnels. Wow. 250 foot long tunnels creating raging siphon-like currents. So what we're essentially waiting for is a tidal equilibrium when the incoming lagoon water meets the outgoing lake water, we'll get slack water. So you say we've got 30 seconds, but what do we have to do in that 30 seconds? Uh, travel 250 feet in pitch darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Moving with our hands on the ceiling, what we don't want is for that current to pick up 
because every minute we wait, we'll get pushed closer and closer to the ceiling wow. and lose our headroom until finally, at the high tide, this tunnel seals up tight. How do you get back? Uh, what we're going to do is time this to perfection, and we're going to have to go through in some current and have to turn around and get back Come out. Back. After 10, 12 years of mastering these tunnels, trust me, I'm going to get us in and out safely, <laughs> but uh, that's not to say that the adrenaline won't be flowing once we're inside. Uh, and that's why it's called the Tunnel of Doom. Yeah, a lot of people laugh, but I've had grown men come out crying, and uh, <laughs> the tunnels will live up to the expectations. So tell us a little bit more about this environment that we're going to see once we're in there. Uh, it's a fascinating environment dominated by one species of coral. This is called Lobophilia, that's the genus name of the coral. And this particular recipe of the environment, the shade from the overhanging branches, the nutrients spilling through the tunnels, and the physical protection from the high walls of the lake, seem to favor this coral and this coral alone. Despite being a very slow-growing coral, it's very aggressive. At night, Lobophilia will reach out with these sweeper tentacles wow. and literally sting their neighbors. Wow. So if other corals moved into the area, Lobophilia will literally fight them right off. So for as beautiful as they look, they're well-armed and dangerous. And That's uh, the amazing thing about corals. It's always a war down there, isn't it? And they like the shade. They thrive in the shade. In fact, they actually fluoresce. Wow. If you were to come here at night with an underwater black light, this entire reef would light up like a velvet Elvis poster. It's uh, <laughs> Fantastic. It's even more bizarre at night. Well, I do this four or five times a year and uh, only by special request. It's, uh, it's very special. But it was time to again plunge into the deep blue sea. Sam's favourite dive is Oolong Channel. And we were about to experience why this dive is so high on the agenda. Palau has become well known for its great shark diving. And people come from around the globe to enjoy the show. Palau has become the first place in the world to declare their territory a shark sanctuary. And when you come to a place like this and get up close and personal with these amazing animals, you appreciate the efforts people go to to help preserve life on our planet. We just had the best dive. We had that many sharks, I can't count them all on my fingers and toes. I reckon at one time, straight ahead, I could see like 15, maybe 20 sharks. But the best thing is they were above us, they were below us, they were inside of us, they are absolutely all around us. Ulon really rocks. Across the world, the history of tourism is littered with examples of pristine destinations like this one suddenly being discovered. They get mentioned in guidebooks and pretty soon become part of the mainstream traveller's journey. But without a little pre-thought and careful growth management, paradise can quickly become a tourist trap. Tourism in Palau is in the very early stages of development. And that's part of what makes this such an incredible place to visit. It's good to see foundation operators such as Sands taking sustainable tourism seriously to help protect the wonders we see all around. I've had the most amazing time here in Palau. 
just look around. This place is just the most serene and perfect destination you could possibly visit. But add on top of that the diving that offers you sheer walls, masses of marine life, wrecks and caves, not to mention Jellyfish Lake for that little bit of extra adventure. Then you've got your ecotourism like the kayaking and all the beautiful things you can do on the islands themselves. Palau is very unspoiled and just waiting to be explored.